Hi, and welcome to another Flutter Flow tutorial. I'm so glad that you, that you decide to watch this video. Today, I want to show you how to perform local search. So I was going to do this with Algolia, but a couple of things came up, but yeah, a couple of things came up and I couldn't um, shoot this video with an Algolia subscription. But once I'm able to get my hands on Algolia, I will show you how to perform local search and at the same time also search via Agolia. So there are two different things here. When you're performing via local search, you're searching a very um, tiny amount of data. I mean, the number of data that you're searching, it's super light. Say, for example, you're searching like maybe 100 rows, you're searching like 50 rows, you know, like that. And it's not a lot. It's not returning a whole lot of content for you. And you're not featuring with so many variables. That works. So what, what's happening is that you're just searching locally. But if you're looking for to searching a whole lot of data with volume, then Agolia, I, I do suggest that you search with Agolia. And another reason why I think you should also search with Agolia is if you're searching multiple tables at the same time. So there are some times where you want to search a whole lot of table. For example, if you if you build a blog application and you want to search the category, you want to search post, you want to search users all at the same time from the same keyword, then I think you should use um, Agolia to do so because on the local search, it's almost impossible for you to search more than one table at the same time. In Flutterflow, it's called document, but just, just know that when I say table, I mean document all at the same time. So I, let's get started with learning how to do this. So this is the recipe uh, application. And I already have this, I already have this right here, which is a, a, a wrap. So I just use the wrap, you know, there are different things you can use here. You can use a list view, you can use a wrap, you can use a stack, depending on how you think it should work. So I'm going to go ahead and create a test run um, so that it doesn't take time for us to test this application. So this is just going to load in the background. So what I, what, what you do is that you go to the to the app state. Yeah, you go to the app state, create a new variable and call it list. Yeah, just, just call it list. Of, okay, yeah, just call it list and say turn it into a boolean. So boolean is a yes or no value. That's what a boolean is. Just call it a boolean. And don't forget, just leave it checked. So this list will be checked and it's going to be called a boolean. So it's going to be checked forever. So go back to our mobile application, come back here and duplicate this particular wrap into two. So I'm going to duplicate it, just duplicate. And this other wrap or search, this other wrap or list view, I'm going to call this a search resort. So I'm going to call this search resort. So this is going to add put the result of the search. And for this one, I'm going to call it without search. So um, this is just to enable me understand what exactly I'm going to be using each of the wrap for. So remember, this wrap is, this, is the search result. This is going to be no search result. <laughs> so let's add some conditional visibility. So that's the thing about searching locally. If you're searching locally, you have to use conditional visibility to tell when it searches and when it doesn't. But if you're searching with a goal here, then there's a very high chance that you really don't need conditional visibility here because this, the, the searches are being pulled from your API directly. But in situation also where you just want, when you just want to leave a placeholder before the user searches, then you're also going to use conditional visibility irrespective of what you're doing. Even if you're using Agolia or you're using, um, you're using the Flutter flow local search. So think of it like Google. So this, so you think of it like, like when, whenever you're searching on Google, you will see that it's always empty until you start searching. That's the type that works very well with Agolia. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to, we're going to add a conditional visibility on the first without search, click on conditional visibility, 
and then click on app state and click on list so when this list is true this this um this wrap will be visible then let's add another condition of visibility app state scroll down call it list yes call it list and then say opposite apply opposite so when this list is not true yeah when this list is not true then it will be visible so once we're done with that we'll come back here click on the search here <coughs> we'll click on the search here and then click on this click on add an action so there are two different ways different ways we can do this we can click on the test field itself add an action say add an action like this say on change so whenever this whenever the person is writing this search will be taking place as the person writes the search will take place this is something that happens when you're searching with google as the person search the searches take place but i wouldn't advise you to use this for local search because it can be a bit slow depending on the network so i do advise that you get to use the you get to use the the icon so when a user click the on submit so I'm going to go ahead and delete this. So when the user click on the submit and say add an action, when the user submit, just type local search here. When the user submit, we will do a local search. So let's just go ahead and open. Let's just go ahead and open and type search. Simple search. Yeah, that's it. So what do we want to search? You choose the document that you want to search. I would say I want to search a collection. And the collection I want to search here is the Me Partners collection. So I want to search the name, the all I want to search the name, the allergy menu, the category, and the price. And then it's going to ask me where's the search term going to come from. So I'm going to say that the search term is going to come from the weak guest state. It's going to come from the test feed. Maximum test result, I'll leave it as nothing. So once this search, then I'll go ahead and change my app state. I'll change my app, my state, local state, yeah. Remember that local state we created a while ago, so I'm going to change it. I'll change it to, I'll change it this volume value, I'll change it to set value, I'll make it false. That's what I'll do. So I'll make it false so that I can show the search result. That's what I'll do. So you can see that you can, uh, I'm going to, so when the user click on this icon, I would change the local state and turn it to false. That's what will happen. And then, and then there have to be another, another icon for the user to cancel. So I'm just going to duplicate this icon and say close. And say close. So this is going to be the icon that will make sure that this particular user so this is not going to perform a local a simple search i'll delete this and this is just going to update the app state and turn it to true then after updating the app states it's going to clear the test feed so it's just going to clear clear the test feed so you there are several ways you can do this you can say when the test feed is cleared then the up then the app state should be updated and um yeah there's just several ways for you to do this but you can also say that if this is empty if this search is empty then you should show this without search and if this search is not empty then you should show the shared search result that's if you're using the unchange value if you're using the unchange um action but if you're using the search action then that's the way you're going to do it. So that's basically how you would create, how you would create a local search. But there's something else you have to do on this local search value. We will have to, so I had, it has a backend query before now. I'm going to remove this backend query. Then I'm going to add a child query instead. On the child query, I'm going to call it local search because this is going to be the result of the search, simple search result. I'm going to call it like this. Say confirm, say confirm and say OK. So this is where then I'm going to fill all this now. I'm going to click on the search result. So I'm going to hide this first. I'm going to hide this visibility first. Click on this one. 
so I can fill this up. So my image path is going to be my local search. It's going to be image. So I'm going to look for the image now, photo URL, my full name. <coughs> my full name is going to be for my local search. Click on name, rating summary, my rating summary values. Then I'm going to click on this. It's going to be a row. This is going to be my categories. <coughs> Document from reference, category, local mail, reference. Okay, um, oh, okay, this is this is just the price. This is just the local me price. This is just the price and nest is just the category. So um, Firebase query is incorrectly set incorrectly in the container. So I'm going to edit back in query. Reviews from variable, local search. I think this should be it. Okay. So now we have our search running. So it's time for us to try this application and see what we've done now. So um, this is the result of what we've built. It took a while for Flutterflow to load up, had to wait and come back again. So you can see this is our, this is our app without the search i mean with no search result this is what users will see when they come in so but when we type a full name like i'm going to type in healthy yeah i'm going to type in healthy so you can see we have this we have this right there and we can cancel it's going to clear and come back all over again so we type fine dining and dining search so now we have all the fine dining resorts over here so you can do a lot of things with this you can take this to a different screen you can calculate the number of resorts you can reset the resort you know you can do a whole lot of stuff with this resort so that's how you create local search with your you know that's how you create local search over here on flutterflow if you have questions feel free to drop it for me on the comment section and i'll do it to answer you but just you know keep back come back to this channel later to see how you would do search with agolia it's pretty straightforward maybe a little bit technical but it's straight to the point it's similar to what you've seen me do here but the only reason why i'm not doing this right now is because of access to the agolia subscription that's why I haven't done so. Um, but if you have an Agolia subscription and you want to jump on a on a on a build, so I'll show you how to build Agolia. Feel free to reach out to me and then we can do a live we can do a live call for the you know for the YouTube channel so other persons can really learn how to use Agolia on the application. So um, keep building, keep you know, keep building, keep making new things and you know just keep moving forward. Yeah, also, I want to say that I'm open for Flutterflow. Uh, if, you, if you're looking forward to building your applications on Flutterflow, feel free to reach out to me. And also, I am launching a Flutterflow course very soon. You will find the link to join the waiting list on the to join the waiting list on the link below. But if you're watching this course in the future, that means it will be the, the link to the course. That's what you find on the description below. Thank you very much for watching again. Have a beautiful, 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 um, beautiful day ahead. Thank you.